Paul is delighted to be an ambassador for the gospel of Jesus Christ, to be God's representative to declare this gospel to all nations, that everybody might have a chance of hearing it and benefiting from it. For the gospel is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, showing the righteousness of God from faith to faith, for the just shall live by faith. He's shown that we need salvation because we have all rebelled against God. It's in our nature. Many people, as they grow up, express that nature in refusing to acknowledge God, not giving thanks to him, denying that he created this world, and then setting up alternative ways of behaviour, contrary to the way in which God designed life to be lived. And they suffer the consequences of their disobedience, because God is not mocked. We all find fault with others, but Paul shows that whenever we find fault with others and judge them, we prove ourselves guilty, because we also break the rules. And that's why we need a saviour, every one of us. But we can't save ourselves by being good. The purpose of the law was to show us our failure, not to provide a way of salvation. So the law given to the Jews did not save them, it just condemned them. Jesus came, born under the law, who lived a righteous life according to the law, and then obeyed God in allowing himself to be executed for sin. But since he had no sin, God imputes his execution as the death of anyone who will believe in Jesus Christ. And he imputes the righteousness of Jesus to everyone who believes in Jesus Christ. And this is the essence of the gospel. So that now when we sin, we don't just look forward to condemnation and judgment because the blood of bulls and goats can never take away sin and we can never undo what is done in the past. But we can be forgiven and we can get up and try again. So the believer is faced with a continual struggle against sin, which is our natural nature, and our desire to walk godly, which is the choice that we make with our spirit. And when we make that choice, God gives his Holy Spirit to us so that we can be changed as a person, so that we can be at peace with God, so that we can have hope for the future, and so that the love of God can motivate our living in the present. The outworking of this then comes to us in a very triumphant chapter 8 of Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share some thoughts on verses 1 to 8 of Romans 8. Paul has previously said, Because Christ has died for us and we have the imputed righteousness of Christ, we are to reckon ourselves to be dead indeed under sin and alive to God, that we are to submit ourselves to God as instruments of righteousness rather than submitting ourselves to sin as instruments of ungodliness. This is a choice that we must make every day. For We are the servants of the one whom we choose to obey. We can choose to obey God and be his servants because Christ has paid 
and met all the necessary requirements. It is simply up to us to acknowledge him and to seek to please him. But if we do not acknowledge him, then nothing we do will please him. So there are two classes of people, those who are in Christ Jesus and those who are in the flesh. Now we still have our earthly body, but when we become believers, when we are baptised into Christ, then we become those who are in Christ Jesus. When God looks at us, he sees our sins all paid for, and he sees the righteousness of Christ. And if we are in Christ Jesus, that is demonstrated by the manner of our living, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. That is, while we will not do everything perfectly righteously, because we are still in the flesh and we are growing in our spirit, nevertheless, we will deliberately intend to do that which pleases God. And we won't just base our decisions on what is good for us at the moment. In other words, we choose righteousness rather than convenience or comfort or immediate gain. Because there is another law, another principle of life that sits beside the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death says you are going the wrong way, we will write down a law which spells out that you are going the wrong way, then we will condemn you. So we find that people drive too fast on the road. The lawmakers make a rule and say, well, 100 kilometres an hour is the speed limit. If you exceed that speed limit, you have broken the law. The law doesn't address the issue of how safe it is in the present circumstances to be driving that speed. It is just a limit that is placed on the speed that you can drive. Many drivers would say the limit is unreasonable. Nevertheless, the law is there. It is there to condemn us, so that if we break the law, we are guilty. But there is another law. It is the law of the Spirit. And under this law there is no condemnation, but rather there is the Spirit of God put in us to guide us to living a righteous life. The speed limit laws are annulled. Instead, we have a navigator to help us choose the appropriate speed and to give us the opportunity of seeking God's will in our lives every day. As we get up in the morning, Father, show me your way for me today. Help me to walk aright, by faith, not by sight. Paul, in many of his letters, will talk about walking in the Spirit and not fulfilling the lusts of the flesh. For these two things are in conflict and we must choose. But when we have the Spirit of God, he helps us choose the right way. So he says, The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of death. The focus of living as a Christian is not looking over your shoulder to see if the policeman is there and going to book you, but rather is the positive outlook on life that says this is what God wants me to do today. If you're going from A to B and you have a map, then you must focus on the map and try and interpret the map. But if you have a guide, you will go from A to B, but you don't need to focus on the map because your guide leads you. Nevertheless, the guide and the map specify the same direction. It's just that the map depends on your ability to interpret it, whereas when you have a guide, you depend upon the guide. The Holy Spirit is the guide of life. He will not lead us to do things that are contrary to the will of God as laid out in the law. But we don't need to have the law of God foremost in our thinking because the Holy Spirit is the guide of our life. So the declaration is made. What the law could not do because it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son In the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. If we walk by the Spirit, there is no condemnation. Rather, we live a righteous life because we are led by the Spirit of God. And if we're led by the Spirit of God, then he is our continual focus. If we are led by the flesh, then that is our continual focus. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God.